Welcome to the third video on polynomials, factors and roots. The previous two videos have given a brief introduction into what we mean by roots and factors of polynomials. In summary, for a given polynomial, let's say y equals f of x, a root of a polynomial is any value of x such that f of x equals 0. A factor let's say f1, is something which divides simply into the original function, so that a function can be written as a product of its factors, as we've put down here, so f equals f1 times f2 all the way up to fn. This video focuses on the relationships between the factors and the roots of first-order polynomials. OK, so the root of a first order polynomial is the value of the independent variable that makes the polynomial 0. So let the first order polynomial be something like h of w equals aw plus b. If we solve for h of w equals 0, what do we get? Well, we end up with, if we write it down, aw plus b equals 0 which gives us aw equals minus b, or finally, w equals minus b over a. So there we are. We've solved for the root of the first order polynomial h of w equals aw plus b. The root is at minus b over a. Now, commonly, a is set to 1. We'll get to that later. And in this case, the root would just be minus b. OK, now a different example. Let's find the root of the polynomial p of s equals 2s plus 3. And we're going to use the same analysis technique as on the previous slide. So what we do first is we set p of s equal to 0. So what does that give us? That gives us 0 equals 2s plus 3. So nothing clever here. And now I want to solve that. So that's what we've got here. We put the 3 on the other side and we get 2s equals minus 3. And then we can solve for s to give us minus 3 over 2. So hopefully you're all happy that this is straightforward. If we want to confirm that this is true, as we did in the first video where we did sketches, what we can do is we can sketch this polynomial. Now being a first order polynomial, you will get a straight line. And there it is, this blue line, um, p of s equals 2s plus 3, with s on the horizontal axis. And clearly, you can see that there's an intercept at minus 1.5, which is where we've computed the root. And the intercept with the vertical axis is 3, as you would expect. So what we've done is we've confirmed using a sketch that this function does indeed cross the horizontal action at uh, um, axis at minus 1.5 and using our analysis technique which is in this top box we found that the root is minus 1.5 so two different methods have given us the same solution for the root now what about factors the computation of roots and factors are in fact equivalent and this slide will now illustrate what the factor looks like although it's not necessary it's convenient, and I'll emphasize that point, it's convenient to write factors such that the coefficient of the independent variable is 1. Okay, So I'll emphasize this again. It's not necessary, but it's convenient. So we'll look at the examples on the previous two slides with independent variables w and s. And we will ask ourselves, what will the factors be like for these two polynomials? So here we go. We've got aw plus b. That was our polynomial. If we wanted to find the factor, what would we do? Well, first we take the a out. And so we can rewrite this as a times w plus b over a. And the factor is then this term over here. You can see w plus b over a. Now you'll notice we've written this as in monic form, i.e. we've made the coefficient of the independent variable as w1. And that's quite convenient because what you will have noticed is that inside this factor, the root has appeared, the root being this b over a term. Okay. Now let's look at the next one, 2s plus 3. 
that can be written as 2 into brackets s plus 1.5. So again, the factors come out as s plus 1.5. And again, you'll notice the convenience of writing the factor in this monic form is the particular root position has fallen out because you'll see the plus 1.5, the root in fact was minus 1.5. So what's the links of factors to roots? If we assume the factor is written such the coefficient of the independent variable is 1, which is what we did on the previous slide, then the factor is going to come out as variable minus root. So let's try a few examples. Here I've got a polynomial 3x plus 6, and I can write that as 3 times x plus 2. So in this case, the factor is going to be x plus 2, and the root is at minus 2. So there you notice if I repeat it, the factor is x plus 2, the root is at minus 2. Here's a different example, 5 times z minus 1. So I can write this as 5 outside the brackets. So I'm now writing the variable z with a coefficient of 1, and that will be minus 0. 0.2. So again, in this case, you can see the factor is z minus 0 0.2, and the root is at plus 0 0.2. So in summary, for a first-order polynomial, there's a simple link between the polynomial coefficients and the root. If you write the polynomial, let's call it f of x, so the coefficient of the independent variable, let's say x, is 1, then the polynomial is structured with the following form. So ax plus b can be written as a into brackets x minus root. And x minus root is the factor in the most convenient form.